Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com, BitamountLive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, January 21st, 2022. Got to get used to saying 22, I guess. I keep, every once in a while, I'm still saying 21. Um, and uh, this is our weekly video. Take a look and see how things went over on eBay last week. Talk about some other things that are going on. And uh, let's get to it. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention was that uh, on the homepage at Bitamount, we added, I added a couple of things this week. Uh, uh, down here in the menus here for the museum collections and so forth, um, we added the PBD Essex Museum. They finally got uh, a, a fair bit of their China Trade collection online. We created a link to get to it. You can go through it and sort it and search it and do things, which is pretty interesting. And another place that you don't often think of, and I didn't know they would even put it online, are the diplomatic reception rooms of the United States State Department. They have an amazing collection of American antiques, Americana and so forth, but they also have a good collection of Chinese export for America. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of it, but, but over the years, a, a lot of uh, families have donated things that are historically important to their uh, 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 collection. And this, this began actually back in the 1960s um, when uh, uh, the, the, the diplomatic rooms were being redone um, with uh, uh, the help of uh, Jackie Kennedy. And they went on from there and they put in a lot of good American furniture and uh, China trade. Uh, mirrors, all kinds of great decorative art. And you can now go there and you can search through their collection. And it's uh, really impressive. It's really, really impressive. But it's as good as anything you'll find at the Metropolitan Museum or the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston or the Philadelphia Museum or any of them. Uh, great, great American furniture, great decorative art, paintings and all that sort of thing. So check that out. Uh, we, we also have the other video that we're working on for this week. On, uh, on, on the collecting stuff that I've done, and uh, it should be up tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it'll be up tomorrow sometime during the day. I got a little behind this week because I was uh, out, out of commission for a good part of yesterday. So uh, here we are. Any rate, uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, and, oh, there were a bunch of sales that closed out on, on, on the uh, global member pages this week. There was a lot there. We updated it with a, a bunch of new sales. Uh, uh, so you want to check that out. Um, there's some good items uh, in there. And each week now we're seeing more and more things coming into it. Okay, now what else is going on here? eBay this past week, as I said, uh, there was last week the, 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 there's suddenly an increase in the number of items being posted on eBay, which is pretty normal. And uh, the, as you, uh, many of you that use the uh, the uh, newsletter page here on off of on Bitamount, you'll you'll have seen that there was a, a, a large uh, increase in the amount of material available in the United States and in Europe from some good collectors, things that we found that we put on here. This is These are just the auction items. And we also included some a section for buy it now from sellers that we like uh, on this page as well, because some a lot of people prefer buy it nows. And uh, we've, we've added some of those. But these are just some of the auction lots that were on here last week and some of the fixed price things. And then at the bottom, there's a whole other area now of fixed price items as well. Okay, there's a lot of a huge number of uh, listings on here. Uh, really, really quite a quite a quite a load. So uh, you want to check those out now. Let's see what's going on here. Start with this: the uh, agate snuff bottle. This was a really, really pretty Qing um, agate snuff bottle. Nicely done, beautifully carved, beautifully polished, uh, good color. Uh, absolutely great, and I think it brought a very fair price. Uh, it sold for $521. I think that was very, very reasonable. This was a nice bottle. It was being sold by uh, a, a seller over in France. That we feature when they get good things. They, they do pretty well. But this was a very pretty uh, uh, sort of light amber colored bottle. I, I liked it a lot. And then uh, next up was this, uh, uh, Josh Chamberlain Juice 1499. He had a sale that ended this week. He had quite a few things in it, and uh, a number of them did quite well. One of them is this uh, jade uh, standing uh, a Guan Yin uh, holding a vase. Somebody had turned this into a lamp at one point. Here it is. Uh, but a beautiful base, a, ni a, nice, a nice old carving, either late Qing or early Republic, but very good quality. Very good quality, and uh, it ended up selling for ten thousand one hundred and seventy-six dollars. But nice, nice looking example. 
And uh, he also had this, this very attractive, uh, very big uh, Satsuma got with Gosso blue. You see this, these blue enamels, very desirable among collectors, um, uh, with an extensive signature on the bottom. And curiously, it had a uh, 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 a uh, Chai Ching mark stamped into it on the bottom, um, underneath the um, the Shimazu clan uh, mark. Somebody had stamped it with a Chin Lung mark, and I don't know the story behind that. Uh, this is not a fake. This is a, a really good piece of Satsuma. But for some reason, somebody did that. I'm not sure why. But this was a really beautiful piece of Satsuma and uh, ended up selling for $5,700, which is a, a, a good price. But this was a big pot. I'm trying to think. This thing was like 18 inches tall. 18 and a quarter inches tall. It's a big one. All right. And now over to this. This was another lot that he sold. It was this uh, beautiful blue glazed, underglazed blue uh, 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 Yuhu Chun Ping. Um, uh, it, had been, it had been turned into a lamp at one point. Uh, somebody drilled it here, but it was a Qing Dynasty example. And I actually heard from somebody um, that bought this uh, the other day. They were wondering what I thought of it. And I told them, I said, it looks fine to me. And I think the price was reasonable. Um, the foot and base all are very consistent with um, uh, uh, 19th century workmanship. The glaze was just absolutely beautiful glaze. The color of this was really quite exceptional. Brilliant, strong, um, nice, nice depth. Uh, and uh, $1,309, there it goes. You know, without the hole in the bottom, it probably would have brought 2500 to 3000 uh, And then you have this, this um, uh, uh, Guajang where um, uh, planter. This got a lot of interest because of the signature and uh, beautifully done all the way around. That that classic drawing. Uh, here's a picture of the bottom of it. it. Looks to be a 19th century example and uh, ended up selling for $18,111. And this is the, 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 in the last three or four weeks, we've seen a number of these Kuan Zhang where pieces bring very strong money, very, very strong money. They've been, they've been popular for a while, but s s suddenly they seem to be creeping up a bit um, uh, as the appreciation for them grows, the, the, the history of them and so forth. This was a style of painting that began in the, in the, 19, in the 1800s and uh, in the second half of the 19th century primarily, and moved on from there, but it became very big with the, uh, with the artistic community. And uh, this was a nice old pot and brought a very good price. Brought a good price, but they're rare, so there you go. All right, and then over to this. This was um, uh, just starred uh, Antiques Limited. Had this nice um, uh, Ming bronze standing Buddha. Uh, very good looking example, nice old bottom on there. That's what they should look like. Um, and uh, the back of it was pretty well detailed up and down. Good patina on it. The patina on this is really nice. Actually deep cocoa patina. So it, it look, it's the kind of surface that if you put your f fingernail on it, you'd almost think you would, you'd feel it, you could dig into it. Uh, and this did quite well. It ended up bringing $1,756 or 1,286 pounds. It wasn't a big one. This wasn't enormous. It was, I think it was like six inches tall or something, eight inches tall, about nine inches, nine or 10 inches tall, nine, nine centimeters wide, 24 by nine, no, 24 centimeters. Wait a minute, this is, uh, uh, yeah, about what, about, about eight or nine inches. Yeah, that's about right. It's not a great big one. It wasn't, you know, 20 inches tall or anything, but a nice, nice surface on it. And then uh, on, on one of these uh, moon flasks, these these late Qing moon flasks, these turn up and they always bring the same money. It's one of those very reliable things. Um, uh, the price, the pricing on these, depending on the size, as they go up in size, the prices rise on them. Uh, this one brought uh, $898, and that's right about what they always seem to bring, somewhere between $825 and $950 in this size. It measured, what was it, around a, a hold on, I'll give you the height here, it's 12 inches, yeah, about 12 inches tall. They do come as, as large as, you know, I've seen them as big as 22, 23 inches tall, and those can bring five to $7,000 if the coloring is very good on them because they're so abnormally large. If you have a pair of them, they bring even more because they they look so great on display in a house when they're great big ones like that. But this was a perfectly good one. It had nice color. The Famille Rose decoration, as you can see, was nicely done, 
evenly painted, uh, good condition, uh, and had that nice uh, aqua blue uh, ground running around it. All right, now over to uh, this. An interesting, this is a very interesting thing, and I don't know if anybody bothered to look at it. From a glance, it just looks like a, a, a standard open export salt like this. But when you flip it over and look at the top, it has a pomegranate carved into the top with flowers all over it, and then these, these curled lappets running around the outside. Uh, it's a nice looking thing. Kenshi period, uh, from what I can see, it had a little chip out of it here on the side and all that, and it still did pretty well. It brought $402. I think without the chip, it probably would have brought 800 But uh, it's a, this is a pretty rare bird um, when you, when, in, in this style with this extra added uh, upper section with the pomegranate. All right, and the pomegranate was a symbol of fertility and uh, because of all the seeds, you know, have lots of children, lots of, for, it's a, a symbol, symbols of, of fertility and having a large family, and that kind of thing. So it's, it makes it interesting from that standpoint. And then over to this, this big nine dragon vase with um, a Vietnamese script on the bottom, uh, uh, nicely done. This is a nice Qing example, probably made for the enemy's market, the Vietnamese market. Uh, but beautifully decorated, really, really pretty, nice white, uh, a good uh, execution of the dragons. If you looked at it carefully, the dragons are, are, are quite well done, five clawed, and uh, ended up selling for three thousand and five dollars in in very excellent condition. I know this seller, Hans. Uh, he Fik is his name. He's he's excellent. He knows what he's doing, and very good. And over to this, the Ming um, shaped rim, barber, they call them barber rim bowls. Uh, Ming Dynasty, probably uh, 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 early 1500s, uh, judging by the style of it. Uh, it has a nice lotus, uh, has a nice uh, peony blossom in the center, nicely done around the outside, nicely carved, nicely shaped rim on it. Uh, the bottom of it looks pretty good. Uh, you know, that iron spot that you see on all these uh, Lung Quan Celadons and uh, so forth. It had a hairline in it right here. But other than that, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. But the color was nice. The one thing I had going for it was this is a very pleasing color. Um, and here's another shot of it from the side showing showing the crack and all that business. Lots of pictures of the crack. He doesn't want anybody to... People do... The smart sellers will do this so you can't call later and say, well, I didn't know it had a crack in it. You know, half the pictures are depicting the crack, so you're fully, fully aware of what's going on. And there's that nice blossom in the center, beautifully done. And there's not a lot of wear here. There's a little bit of wear, but not much. Often the centers of these celadons are pretty worn in places, to the point where you may, you may not even be able to see the decoration. It wears right through the glaze. This one isn't bad at all. It's nice. And uh, brought $848. Without the crack, it probably would have brought 1400 or 1500 and then this, this pretty little Le Ching uh, rooster pot, teapot with a rooster on it, uh, bright Famille Rose colors. It almost looks like Nonya Strait's uh, uh, decoration. Um, it, it, you wouldn't be surprised to find it there because the colors are very bright and festive and celebratory. Uh, and the shape is nice, pretty classical uh, Le Ching form here. It's a, it's a shape that actually started much, much earlier that you see Chin Lung teapots that are shaped, some, shaped somewhat similarly. But this decoration is uh, very uh, late Qing, 1875 to 1900, somewhere in there. Good looking pot. And ended up doing pretty well. It had a minute chip to the uh, spout, it says here. I didn't see it. I couldn't see it. It must be really minute. Um, but it sold for $409 US. Um, uh, Philip Carroll uh, Column. Carroll Column? Phil, actually, we, we've had him before. Um, he, he's over in, in the UK. Uh, had it, and uh, it did it did fine. It did fine. Nice looking teapot. All right, and then this this was one of my favorite things. Um, I like this. This was a, a gilt a red and gilt lacquer seated Buddha. And what I really liked about it was the face of the Buddha. He was extremely happy looking. This was a great face. Beautiful detail among the eyes and the lips and so forth, um, and, and done in the same manner that you see the, the porcelain examples of the seated Buddhas. This one was carved in wood. I thought it was just absolutely great. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. There's a the little stand that they had made for it. It's lacquered on the bottom, so it's lacquered around here, and a uh, nice-looking figure. And the seller had it conservatively dated as Republic. 
Um, I think it might have been older than that, but judging by the quality of the carving, this, this carving is really good. The face and all this ex enormously uh, detailed. Um, my, my feeling on it is it's probably mid-19th century. And somebody picked it up, look at that, $139. That's a heck of a good price, 102 pounds. Um, who was selling this anyway? UK Asian Art had this. I think that was an absolutely great buy. I think it was a really good buy. Beautiful, beautiful little carving. Um, I, if it had brought 600, I wouldn't have been at all surprised. All right, and now over to this, the little, um, either, either uh, 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 is it Yuan Dynasty? See the Song of Yuan Dynasty, this little jarlet. I, I kind of, I liked it. Um, somebody wrote and said that it was restored. I thought, I thought I thought he was saying it was restored. I don't see any restoration on this. Maybe they meant another one. Anyway, it brought $318, which is right about, I think we might have even said maybe, um, it says some minor restoration with overpainting evident. Oh, to one of the handles on one side. Okay, so one of those little, oh, okay, the one on the right might have been overpainted a little bit. That's it. That's not bad. Because uh, the incise decoration, the relief decoration with the dragon, see the dragon's head up there? It's really quite nice. And uh, $318, so that's okay. And then moseying along to this um, pewter, this big pewter tray. It's a nice one. It's very unusual. This is a really unusual tray, the way they did the fish and the dragons on it. Um, they're sort of relieved, uh, uh, relieved off of it where they've sort of done almost like scrifato, uh, scrifito uh, uh, work in the background and then have smooth polished areas and these rue heads running around the outside. And this very, very uh, ex excited dragon in the middle, surrounded by fish. Um, this is just a nice, nice old tray, probably from the Swato area. Um, ended up selling for a, a $975, 37 centimeters wide. So it's about, uh, uh, what is this, about 15 or 16 inches in width. But very interesting. And, and pewter, uh, we've talked about pewter before. It seems, you know, very underappreciated for what it is, pewter and pactong even. And pactong used to be heavily collected. Now that nobody really understands what it is. But at any rate, it's, it's, a, it's a metal nickel composition and so forth. But anyway, um, uh, th this is a good sign if pewter's starting to bring upwards of $1,000 for a tray. I mean, as nice as it is, I don't, I'm not saying anybody overpaid for it because it's a very interesting tray. Visually, it's it's graphically very interesting, but um, 975 is a good thing. And this was uh, sold by Loft Seeker, um, who's a, a seller over in, in the UK also. UK guys get a lot of good stuff. And then on to this, the uh, the the framed silk with the uh, very nice colors, nice strong colors, uh, good quality weaving on this uh, cocoa brown ground, but l very finely woven all the way around. Nice weaving. Always check the weaving. See how tight it is, how, how finely it's done. This is finely done weaving. And I uh, ended up selling for $760, but in beautiful condition, no stains. Obviously cut from something larger. This was originally perhaps an altar hanging or something that somebody trimmed down. Um, what size was this? Did they give it 34 by 30, 38 by 34 inches. So it was good size. Make a nice presentation on a wall. Uh, really attractive. Just remember, if you're hanging silk, don't ever hang them in the sun. Whatever you do, <laughs> and because they'll fade by in a week. Um, and here you have this very nice uh, little kung shi bowl with the uh, chai jing mark on the bottom. But uh, the the bowl is 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 kung shi. Got a little fu line running around the outside. Nice looking foot rim on that. And uh, ended up selling, I think, pretty reasonably, seven hundred and sixty four dollars. Not a big price. Uh, because it's a fairly fine looking little bowl and uh, n a nice color, nice cobalt color. And then over here to this, this is the Kangxi dish. A, uh, and I, I think this was also a very good buy, a Kangxi dish. Uh, it had a bit of wear in the middle that may have, may have held it back, but nice enameling, nice decoration, the real deal, and this very good Wutai decoration. And uh, I think that's a white flower. I don't think that's actually worn. I think that's actually a white flower on there. Let's see if we can find a picture of it. Um, I think that's a white enamel flower. It just doesn't doesn't look great in the photography, but it's Kangxi, and uh, somebody picked it up for two hundred and ninety-three dollars, which I think is very reasonable. 
Um, uh, it, it, look, it would look nice hanging. It is, uh, what size is this thing? Did you throw the dimensions in here? Probably not. Why people don't include dimensions? I don't get it. I don't get it. You go to all the trouble of listing something, you'll leave out the dimensions. Are they in the photos somewhere? Is he hiding his ruler in the photographs? Nope. Just no no dimensions. Just it just says Kangxi 18th century can be fair. Um, yeah, I don't know what, why people do that. But at any rate, it's a good looking dish. I'm assuming it was probably around 10 or 11 inches in size. And then over here to the robe, uh, uh, early Republic period robe, nice color. Looked like it was in very, very good condition. Uh, a bit unusual coloring. And uh, nicely done all the way around. $3,373, probably made some time ago oh, between 1912 and 1925, I would guess, somewhere in there, judging by the, the style of the sleeves and the way the cuffs are done and the overall color and composition of it, somewhere in that price range. And uh, it was may have been made for export. Somebody, this is the kind of thing that people would buy when they went to China uh, to bring back as keepsakes, and they threw them in a trunk and forgot about them for 100 years, and then it turns up here. All right, now, what's coming up? There's a few things coming up this week. Uh, let's take a look here. There we go. This this is this will be in, in this week's news. These are some of the things that will be in this week's newsletter. Is this nice little square uh, uh, Ming Dynasty, it looks like, uh, or Ming Mark. Let's take a look at this. Do, 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 do. Looks like a late Ming uh, sweet meat or early early Qing uh, sweet meat tray. Um, he is at uh, late Ming blue and white. I, I think it's more likely Qing, I, I'm, uh, from what I'm seeing, uh, uh, the way this is done. But late Ming or Qing, he seems to feel it's Asian art. He's uh, over in the UK. He's he's pretty good. Uh, so he, he he's handled it. I haven't. So he thinks it's late Ming. Could be it's late Ming or early early Qing or transitional some just before the transitional period, something like that. At any rate, it's, it's, it's only up to $32. It ought to bring three or 400. Nice looking thing. And uh, then you have this, the silk um, uh, tapestry. Uh, this closes in, uh, what is it? Closes in two days, closes Sunday. Nice dragon example. We've seen these before. I think there was one like this a few weeks ago. I don't think it's the same one. And I, as I recall, it brought uh, about $2,500. So we'll see how this does. Eighteen hundred or twenty-five hundred, somewhere in that price range. And uh, then this, this is um, this is up. It's not getting any attention at all. I don't know why. It's a uh, to me, it looks like a legitimate Chinese export reverse painting on glass. This is not. I don't. This is not one of these. One of the modern uh, uh, knockoffs that you see floating around. This is an old one, and it's just up to twenty dollars, and it's three days to go. It closes Tuesday. Um, so he's put his description in there, but um, this frame, this woodwork, this details up in here, all of this looks old to me. Um, I don't, you know, shipping it, it's a little bit tough. It's in La Luray, Virginia, but if you're in the United States, uh, they can get that to you. They can pack it properly, and that's a nice, I think it, it's got a fracture, a crack maybe in it. Hold on, let's go over the details here. Uh, see last picture for description. Okay. This guy, how lazy can you get? Um, image has a full length crack that is stable. Okay, so you want to find out on this: is it actually a crack, or is it um, where the paint is lifting? He said there's a full length crack on one side, and I can't see it. Um, get a hold of the seller and ask him: is it the paint that's lifting, or is the glass actually cracked? Because sometimes you, you'll get these areas where the, where the paint cracks, sort of in a line. And it's not actually the glass, it's just the paint on the enamel on the top. But regardless, if it's over in here somewhere, who cares? This is a nice um, a scene of musicians, Chinese musicians, in this very attractive little terraced garden setting. And uh, it's, it's at just has one bid at $20. All right, and the reason is, is that people see these and they just assume they're one of those really bad copies they made in the 1950s. It's not, it's a real one. And over to this, this Anonia Straits Lime Green. Uh, 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 Peranican uh, teapot, uh, late Qing, uh, nice color. Uh, they bother with a picture of the bottom of this thing. 
Yeah, Lei Cheng. There, there's the that foot. Looks fine. Uh, yep. Uh, it's up to three hundred thirty-eight dollars. It'll probably triple that by the end. But it's a nice-looking teapot, if you like. If you like those pieces. All right, and then over to this, the little bamboo of 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 the uh, Liohan. Uh, this is a nice little carving. I think it's probably early nineteenth century or something, but uh, good detail, good color, nice patina on this. Uh, this is not a modern carving. It's a nice old one. I love the face on him. I love the eyes and the way his hands are positioned, and all this. Here's a picture of this. Picture of the bottom. Looks good. Uh, let's see who this is being sold by. Dan Leisha. I don't know who Dan Leisha is. It's a seller in the UK. It's up to just $36, okay? Um, uh, this should bring two to 300 I would think. This is a nice little carving. Looks genuine, and it's, um, uh, uh, he says it's bamboo. Yeah, it is bamboo. Look at that. You see all the little eyes, the little dots. Yeah, this is, this is an odd piece of bamboo. Like that. That's a clever, clever little bamboo figure. And, uh, and then the last thing up that's coming up is this very nice uh, Wuxing Shanghai uh, a bowl. It's being sold by Oriental Antiques in the UK. Uh, but this is, this is a nice piece of silver. That's a very elegant piece of silver. 19th century work. Uh, nice stippled ground on it. Beautiful dragon's head. Um, there's the interior polished and then repoussé and chased and all that business. Very attractive. Very attractive piece of Chinese silver. It's up to $1,341. Oh, no, it's a buy it now. Oh, excuse me. This isn't an auction lot. But, oh, that's right. I found it. I'm going to put it in there anyway. It's $1,331, which if you've been following silver prices lately for a nice signed piece of silver like this, how big is this thing? Eight, uh, six inches in diameter. Okay, so it's decent size. That's not a bad price. That's not a bad price at all if you're a silver buyer. Um, and Oh, and it has an unmarked... Um, um, uh, monogram shield on it. So if you buy it, you can put your monogram on it. There's the there's the mark on the bottom. Wuxing, uh, nicely done, nicely done all the way. This is a very good bowl, and uh, 900, uh, 975 pounds or thirteen hundred and thirty one dollars. Uh, that's not bad at all. Um, if you've been following silver prices, you know what I mean. Uh, At any rate, fair price. All right, that that's about it for the week. Uh, the, the, we'll be updating the newsletter page. Um, uh, I mean, the uh, global member page is tomorrow morning, first thing. We do them every Saturday morning uh, as soon as we can get to them. We've had some coffee. And uh, like I said, there'll be another video up this uh around this by this time tomorrow that we're doing on something here that I, I collected is sort of an interesting story behind it um, uh, to do with a, a couple of very very nice Chinese paintings and um, and how I got to them and, and who I got them from and it's a, it, it's a, two of my favorite th two of my other favorite things I have a lot of favorite things but I really like these um, I like them well enough that I gave them as a wet as a, a, a Christmas gift to my wife one year what I bought them and decided that's what I wanted to do with them all right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't yet and, and uh, join us over at bitamount.com. Um, try out the global member pages and uh, remember uh, you can find things on it. We just added a blog this week to uh, the Bitamount Live site on Famille Rose Porcelain you might find useful. And we included a couple of videos in that and a lot of images on, uh, on uh, Chinese uh, Famille Rose. Uh, let's hold on a second. I'll pull it up here really quickly. I say I'm done and then I'm not done. Okay. Um, this one right here. Uh, on, on Chinese Famille Rose. Collecting uh, Chinese Famille Rose. This was a video we'd done a couple of years ago on the subject and I thought it was pretty good to fit in here. And we've got a whole bunch of images. They all enlarge and there's a ton of images of legitimate Famille Rose porcelain and what period they're from, which is the most important thing of course. So it'll tell you it's, you know, Daoguan period, Daoguan, Daoguan, Qinlong, Yongshen, and there's even a Kangxi example. Uh, and there's some uh, information about it. And then there's a, a second video on Famille Rose also, and uh, talking a little bit about Chinese porcelain and whatnot. Not a bad little story, I think. Came out pretty well. And that's over on Bit'em Out Live this week. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Sun is out here. It's cold as can be though and uh, we'll see you all uh, next time. All right.
Bye-bye.